Hey everyone, NASA released a nice set of imagery on July 23rd of some of the work performed in the last month or so of the Core Stage 2 build at the Michoud Assembly Facility in New Orleans. Within a few hours of the time that the stage reached the dock at the Kennedy Space Center Turn Basin on board the agency's Pegasus Barge, pictures and video taken in mid-June and early July were published on the images.nasa.gov website, also known as Avail. As I'm processing this video for publication, the stage is being prepared for the move off the barge and into the transfer aisle of the Vehicle Assembly Building at KSC, where it will be prepared for stacking and mostly waiting for a few months until NASA is ready to mate it to the two SLS boosters for Artemis II. This multimedia is still historically valuable though, as it helps to more fully document the final days of the second and last full SLS core stage to be built at Michoud. To place this new set of stills and video on the timeline, NASA announced the mid-July rollout schedule in a media advisory published on June 7th. At that time, they also published a shot of the Artemis II SLS core stage as seen on June 5th. All the scaffolding remained in place around the stage at that time. A few weeks back, NASA published an undated time-lapse video showing removal of some of the portable work stands and the subsequent rolling of the stage to perform final preparations for delivery. On July 23rd, two stills were published showing the stage on June 18th, which provides a reference point for the earlier time-lapse. The next set of newly published imagery was from the move of the stage from the final assembly area at MAF to Building 110, which occurred on July 6th. A single still was published on July 8th confirming that the move had taken place, but the additional still images and edited video released two weeks later provide a more comprehensive view of the move. The first shot in the B-roll video is from the Area 48 footprint of the 4748 Final Assembly Area, looking at Area 47 where the stage was moved after the engine section was mated to the rest of the stage in March of 2023. All the shipside support cubicles and other equipment like that were in the area where this shot was taken from, but that was all cleared out, and with the stage now in Florida, 4748 can now be used for the next core stage builds. You can see that the stage is held by the two blue Rotational Assembly and Transportation Tools, or RATS. The stage has been rotated to zero degrees up, so the umbilical plates are facing the ceiling here. This is the orientation that the stage was transported in. You can compare that with the shots from June 18th, where it was in the 90 degrees up orientation, with the systems tunnel side of the stage facing out towards the camera. The indoor self-propelled modular transporters, which are the white ones, are seen powered up and ready to begin moving. A pair of SPMTs is used to pick up and move each rat. You can see the lights on them flashing. Then there's a shot from the interior of 4748, and then we see the doors opening to the outside. Then a shot from the outside looking into the open 4748 area, also unusual because it's about to be empty and then we see the move begin. As the sun comes up, the stage is moved out onto the tarmac area, and then there's a shot of the aft end of the stage after it is fully out of final assembly, and the doors have been closed. Next, we can see that the doors to building 110 are opening, and the stage is being slowly rolled towards that location. Then shots of the stage from ground level outside, and then we see it as the aft end reaches the doorway to the 110 transfer aisle. This is a nice shot of the upgraded weather protection that has been installed on the building after a tornado and multiple hurricanes have either brushed or directly hit the facility over the last decade. This is a shot looking down the length of the stage from front to back, forward to aft. 
A temporary covering protects the inside of the forward skirt area where the flight computers, inertial navigation unit, and one of the command and telemetry controllers are mounted. The Rinyu is actually mounted on the forward dome of the LOX tank, but that basically fills part of the forward skirt volume. Now we're looking at the aft end of the stage again with the four RS-25 engines prominently in view. In this orientation, engine position one is in the top left with engine serial number 2047 filling that position. Engine 2063 is top right in position number four. Engine 2059 is in position two on the bottom left and engine 2062 is in position three on the bottom right. This shot is taken pretty far back in the 110 transfer aisle. You can see the vertical assembly center weld tool on the right here. This shot is from a location we don't see that often, obviously from up in the rafters of building 110. Starting from the top left and moving clockwise, we have the VAC first, then cell F is partially in view in the top right. Then the cell E washing machine, then the cell D stacking cell, and finally the other stacking cell, cell A, across the aisle. The 212 foot long stage barely fits inside. And then back to a ground level shot as it is backed into the transfer aisle on July 6th. On July 11th, the stage was lifted by the two heavy cranes in Building 110 so that the factory carriers and transporters could be replaced by the overland carriers and transporters, and NASA released a set of stills and edited video of that too on July 23rd. This operation will be performed on the upper four-fifths of future stages, but this was the last time on a fully completed core stage. Next time, a bare metal cylinder will stand in for the complicated engine section, which was already shipped to Florida for outfitting a year and a half ago. The four RS-25 engines for future core stages will be shipped to Florida first from the Stennis Space Center and installed in the vehicle assembly building at KSC. In the opening shots of the edited video, we see members of the lift team getting ready to hook up one of the cranes to the engine section. The rats are secured around the whole circumference of the stage and cranes have already been used to help remove the top half of the ring. Prior to that, the stage was also rolled a little bit forward and out of the opened doors of Building 110 to be in a good position for the two cranes. It was July in New Orleans and typically the calmest time of day is right around daybreak, so these outdoor or partially outdoor operations tended to be conducted around that time. Next is a shot taken from cell A closer to the doorway, showing the other crane being hooked up to the forward SRB attach points on either side of the inner tank. Back on the ground, we see shots as the stage is lifted out of the rats, first the forward one, and then the aft one. Then a shot after the stage has been lifted to a kind of high hover position clear of the rats and the white indoor SPMTs. In the next shot with the stage hanging from the two cranes, we see those SPMTs moving the rats out of the transfer aisle and outside into the tarmac area. Now a shot from outside looking at that. You can kind of see how the forward end of the stage sticks out of the doorway and we get a shot down the length of the minus Z or 180 degree side of the stage. Next is our first view of the mustard colored NASA carriers and transporters as they are rolled into the transfer aisle and into position under the stage. The common hiss and multi-purpose carrier is in the foreground here and the forward hiss, which stands for hardware interface structure, is in the back. Then there's a wide shot looking at the scene from out on the tarmac with the carriers being rolled in. The next shot is of the forward hiss that will attach to the forward SRB attach points on the inner tank. Then a wide shot from inside 110 looking at the stage as the overland equipment is positioned for attachment. Then we start to see the cranes lower the stage down to the forward and common hisses.
The next shot shows that fine positioning work. And then the last shot is from building 114 looking into building 110 with the stage being attached to the overland carriers and transporters. These still images taken during the July 11th operation also show that crane lift with the stage hanging from the cranes as the white indoor SPMTs move the rats out of the transfer aisle. And there's a few stills as the overland SPMTs bring in the two hisses and carriers. The stage was wheeled around so that the nose was pointing into the building and the engines were pointed out the doors or out the doorway. This allowed a weather cover to be installed to replace the cover that was in place when the stage was moved from final assembly to building 110. A couple of days ago on July 22nd, NASA posted some shots of Artemis II pilot astronaut Victor Glover when he visited Michoud on July 15th, the day before the rollout. We can see how close the engines get to the Building 110 doors and doorway when it was parked inside. It was said that Glover participated in a spaceflight awareness event with the workforce on that afternoon, and this is a shot of all of them with the whole area on the western end of Building 103 in the background. I'll come back to this picture in a news video, although some of the things in here are a little blown out by the lighting. Thanks for watching. Click on the like button if you found this video informative.